Welcome, everyone. My name is Marianne Rauch Davis, and I am the manager of technical field sales for NEOS Geo Solutions. Over the next approximately 15 minutes, I plan to describe how we used our multi measurement methodology to map fracture swarms and high grade new drilling locations in Colorado's Pionce Basin within the Mancos Interval. The objective of this project was to identify natural fracture fair base swarms that enhance reservoir permeability and enable high rate gas production. We were asked to map regional structure and basin scale features, identify fracture fairways and their geologic drivers, high grade well locations to enhance productivity of future drilling programs. Our exploration methodology uh, was in three parts. We did a new scan regional basin context survey over 1,000 square mile that was followed by a 500 square mile NEO basin survey, then followed by a 50 square mile NEO prospector survey. Our deliverables are fracture maps, play maps, probability for hydrocarbon maps, and high potential for well locations. Currently, we completed three projects and are in discussion on projects four and five. The drilling results of a recently uh, finished well confirm our predicted fracture fairways. This is a simple description of NEOS' workflow. We are data agnostic and as such we acquire data from various sources like airborne data using uh, aeroplane and helicopter, uh, USGS data we ground to truth and get uh, samples from the soil, we use satellite data, seismic and well data if applicable. Every single data set is now processed individually and very carefully. The process data are interpreted individually by our specialists and then we integrate all of those data types into a geostatistical modeling, which results in uh, rock type and spatial variation prediction, fluid saturation distributions and fracture density indication. This slide shows the topography of the study area with outlines of the NEOSCAN in red, NEO basin in blue, and NEO prospector in yellow. For a NEOSCAN analysis, we acquire publicly available data such as USGS potential fields and satellite data. The NEO basin analysis is performed over a much smaller area and normally includes airborne potential field data, hyperspectral, electromagnetic, geochemical data sets, seismic and well data. Finally, the NEO prospector that's done over a small area within the NEO basin utilizes the results of the NEO basin analysis and the adds high resolution magnetic, high frequency electromagnetic, radiometric, production information if available and more detailed geology and well information. For the large-scale NEOSCAN investigation, we use USGS data such as this reducible magnetic data set and Bube gravity. The study area is outlined in the south in black. Large-scale geological trends and fault lines can be interpreted from these data types. Besides uh, magnetic and gravity data, we also acquired high-resolution hyperspectral over the near basin area. This slide shows a zoom of the hyperspectral data over the near prospectors. Please note the high resolution of the image that clearly shows the topography that makes it difficult to acquire seismic data and even to drill wells. The left figure shows the RTP magnetic data set that was acquired over the Neo Basin area. A magnetic high is visible to the south and covers most of the Neo prospectors and is colored in pink and red. The right figure displays the Bouguer gravity. Gravity highs are indicated in red and lows in blue. General geologic trends can be interpreted. Both figures include an outline of the Neo prospector areas to the south. 
For our near prospect, we acquired high-resolution magnetic data, which is shown at the top of this figure, high-frequency EM, and one of our electromagnetic products can be seen at the bottom of this slide, and radiometrics and hyperspectral data. The figure at the top of this display show uh, the first horizontal derivative of the high-resolution magnetic data reduced to pole. Areas that have high magnetic content are displayed in red and are input in the diffraction swarm analysis. An additional magnetic derivative, namely the tilt derivative, is displayed in grayscale at the bottom. This attribute is very useful for fault and fracture mapping. As mentioned early on, we are interpreting each data set individually. Here we are showing you an interpretation of the high resolution magnetic. Areas with high susceptibility, which are colored in red, are interpreted as being fractured. We believe that iron rich waters deposited magnetic material along those fracture swarms, which then show up as the magnetic anomalies. After we individually process and interpret our various data sets, we fuse and integrate them. This figure shows the bouquet gravity with the 450 Hz EM data as overlay. We form the following hypothesis. We believe that tertiary intrusives form and fracture the rock surrounding them. The gravity indicates the intrusives and the uh, iron-rich waters that migrate through newly formed fractures show up as magnetic anomalies. In addition, we investigated the resistivity and we had low resistivity around fracture swarms, which indicates near-surface expressions of hydrocarbon seeps. We tested our hypothesis by performing 2D magnetic and gravity modeling. The right side of the picture shows one of the 2D models that were created. The location of this specific model can be seen on the left map. The pluton, together with the deeper intrusives and the fracture fairways, could clearly be modeled. And the modeled gravity and magnetic response is in good agreement with the measured data, which gives us confidence in our hypothesis. 3D gravity modeling was also performed in order to get a better understanding of the basin architecture and the Mankos interval. Very few wells intersected the Mankos, and in the absence of well data, gravity 3D modeling was done to derive an estimation of the Mankos structure. An additional product of the gravity modeling was an estimated density at the Mankos interval as seen on the right side of this figure. And this Mankos density was input into the geostatistical analysis together with all other interpreted data types. For the final results, all individually interpreted data sets were input into a geostatistical analysis and fracture density maps, as seen at the top, followed by hydrocarbon probability maps, as seen at the bottom, for the Mankos interval were generated. The results were checked by correlating them to existing wells that were not input into the analysis, and a very good correlation was achieved. Here are our conclusions. neo basin and neo prospector data captured different measurements at different scales. However, the multiple data sets can be integrated and simultaneously interpreted to reveal new subsurface insights. Newly acquired gravity, magnetic, and electromagnetic data can be integrated with reprocessed seismic and well data to develop highly constrained 2D and 3D geological models. Multi-measurement interpretation methods can be used to generate predictive maps of fracture densities and hydrocarbon probabilities that correlate with production data from existing wells. Integration of all available data sets and a simultaneous interpretation of multiple methodologies improves subsurface understanding. If you like more information on our approach and see more examples, please visit us on our website www.neosgeo.com. Thank you very much.